most of you know my story that uh, I wasn't raised uh, in the Greek Orthodox Church, much to my chagrin. All of you who have uh, grown up in this church your whole life, I um, genuinely do envy you. I would have loved to have gotten here quicker, but I got here as quick as I could in my early 40s. After having been raised a Pentecostal all my life, and I was in the religious movement uh, in the United States called the Holiness Movement. That's what I was raised in. Now, I don't know about you guys, if you've ever heard of the Holiness Movement. It came uh, in the early days of the 1900s. After in the 1800s, the last half of the 1800s saw a great religious revival, especially in England and Ireland and then moving over here into the United States. Uh, and it spurned a, uh, several new denominations, actually, in the United States. By the way, did you know that there are over 40,000 different Protestant denominations in the world uh, with an average of two denominations starting in this country every two weeks? Holy moly. Uh, if, um, if that's the answer to our problems, folks, why is the country in such chaos? Anyway, let's get back to the whole point. So this history lesson is just to tell you a little bit about where I came from. And I came, I was raised in um, the Pentecostal world, and, and, and it, was the, it was really known as the holiness movement. Now, the Pentecostal world started in 1901, 1902 with um, uh, revivals in 1906 in uh, Azusa Street and, um, and also a little Bible college in Topeka, Kansas. Uh, there were these outcroppings of spiritual experiences that really were kind of like the beginning of the Pentecostal movement here in the United States. And tied with the Pentecostal movement was this idea of holiness. Now, believe it or not, this homily has everything to do with the last two homilies that we've been talking about uh, for the last several weeks about stewardship. And about how we are to steward our lives and to not take it, take for granted and to not waste the time and the treasures and the talents that God has given each one of us. Each one of us have time and we have treasures and we have talents. Each one of us are blessed with the gift of life. And so the question becomes... How do we steward that life so well that we don't waste our gifts and we don't waste our time? Whole libraries of books have been written how to answer that question. It's not a new struggle. It's not a new question. But believe it or not, this homily, when I'm going to be talking about holiness, has everything to do with stewardship, with the stewarding of your life and the choices you make, and how you make your choices, how you set your priorities, how you govern your life in such a way that it reflects that you are not walking through life asleep. I've met people like that. I've been like that. Where you let life live you instead of you living life. So I was raised in the holiness movement. In the holiness movement, we had some strict rules. Men cut their hair short. In fact, I'll just give you a little quick example. My mother and father were born in, um, uh, were born, were married in a church of God. It's a Pentecostal denomination. And at that time, when they were married, it was wrong for Pentecostal holiness people to wear jewelry. So they didn't get married with rings. They weren't allowed to use rings in the ceremony. The women did not cut their hair. They did not wear makeup. Ever. The men cut their hair very short, and men always wore long sleeves, no watches. If you had a watch, it was a pocket watch. This almost sounds like I was uh, raised in the Mennonites, doesn't it? It's not. We had, this is a big deal, especially in the American South, where the fervor of being holy was the most important thing. What does it mean to be holy? Well, what it meant to be holy in the holiness world that I grew up with is I don't drink, smoke, or chew, and I don't go with girls that do. We didn't go to the picture show. 
And our pastor told us the reason why you don't go to the picture show. Look at all them picture shows up there. They don't know which one you're watching. You may be going to see the Disney movie, but there's that R-rated movie right next to it. How do they know how, which one you're watching? You don't go to the picture show. And boys, you keep your hands to yourself. Always, in every way, shape, fashion, or form. Don't you be touching those girls. I never will forget, me and, uh, me and some friends of mine were roughhousing around the church outside, and the pastor grabbed me by the ear and said, if you touch that girl again, boy, I'll wear you out. I got in trouble for holding hands with Connie Dodd at a re youth retreat. Now, why do you think they were like that? Because they had an idea of holiness that said, if you're genuinely serious about loving God and following God, if you are actively trying to live a Christian life, your life is going to reflect that. Now, we may laugh... And we may make fun of some of their things. Oh, by the way, when we'd, go to, when we'd go to youth camp, boys had the time to swim and the girls had the time to swim. They wouldn't know what we call mixed bathing. And the girls had to wear culottes down to below their ankles. And the young men had to wear shorts that reached the top of their ankles. This was to go swimming. Now, that's the world that I grew up in. That was normal to me. And while we may look at that now and say, wow, how backward, how, how childish. Um, that's the reason why we were always so overweight. The only thing we could do is overeat. We did that. But the reality was these folks were onto something. In fact, most religious movements in the history of the world have had a set of ideas. You heard me last week. What did I tell you? Folks, the service starts at 10 o'clock. If you're not here before the gospel lesson, don't approach the chalice. Isn't that interesting? Why is that? Because, brothers and sisters, if you are going to be a good steward of the spiritual gift that God has given you in giving you this precious orthodox faith, you are going to have to be proactive and not simply just treat this like it's the happy accident of your birth. You're going to have to actively be engaged in practicing the faith. Well, thank God I grew up in my idea of holiness. In fact, that's the reason why when the Apostle Paul mentions that we are, we are supposed to watch this. What does he say in the epistle lesson? The Apostle Paul says, and this hits me like a ton of bricks, folks. Cleanse yourselves so that you can make holiness Perfect in the fear of the Lord. Now, I want to define those words for us. First, the command that the Apostle Paul gives us to cleanse ourselves. If you are genuinely serious about practicing the Orthodox faith, you are going to listen to the wisdom of the faith in how you conduct your life. If you don't live according to the wisdom of the faith, or if you treat the wisdom of the faith as if it were nothing, please be assured it is okay for people to assume you're actually not orthodox. It's okay for them to assume that. It's okay. If you don't practice the faith, it is not surprising that people assume you're not actually orthodox. That's okay. Oh, but Father, I'm Greek, or I'm Russian, or I'm Serbian, or I'm Albanian. Well, congratulations. God bless you. That means you've had a head start. You've had this faith for centuries. Why in the world are you so far behind? If you're going to practice the faith, it is going to be as you are proactively awake to the treasure of the faith that has been given to you, and you're going to properly value that treasure of faith in such a way that it actually forms and shapes your behavior. That's the reason why the Apostle Paul said, cleanse yourselves. Later, early on in the, in the passage, he said, touch not the unclean thing. Excuse me. And the reason why the Apostle Paul goes there is because God has said, you are the temple of God. You, the body that you're carrying around right now. My temple needs maintenance, but that's okay. It's where I'm working on it. You are the temple of God. And God said, God promised us 
that if he's going to make you the temple of God, guess where he's going to live? He wants to live in you. I'm going to be their God, and they're going to be my children. I'm going to be their father. Therefore, the Apostle Paul has God say, touch not the unclean thing, and come out from among them and be separate from them. Therefore, cleanse yourselves and make holiness perfect in the fear of God. Now, what he means by that is this. If you are going to stu- if you're going to properly value the treasure of the orthodox faith, you're going to listen to the wisdom of the faith and you're going to apply that wisdom in how you choose to live your life. And then he says this, he says you're going to make holiness. And what does the word holy mean? Holy doesn't mean that it glows in the dark and doesn't touch the ground when it walks. It doesn't it doesn't it doesn't emit a sound of angels saying oh. That's not, that's not what holiness means. Holiness doesn't mean I don't drink, smoke, or chew, or go, go with girls to do. That's not holiness. Holiness literally means, watch this, folks. This is going to be on the final exam. Trust me. Holiness means set apart for a specific use. When God calls you and me to be holy... He means for us to so reorient the way we think and live that it is obvious that we belong exclusively to Jesus Christ. That's what holiness means. And then the Apostle Paul commands us to make holiness perfect. What does that mean? Well, the Greek word there doesn't mean perfect in the sense of without any flaw. It literally means mature well-rounded, grown up, thoughtful, serious, dependable, faithful. If you are going to properly steward the gift of your life that God has given you, the very fact that you're living and the very fact that each one of us is going to die, that is going to happen. One of the saints said, and this always blows my mind, Keep your mind in hell and don't despair. And I always wanted to pull that saint aside and say, can you help me with that, please? Well, here's why. This is how. Deal with reality, the reality that each one of us are headed to to an end. And live the treasure that you have right now in such a serious and mature and focused way that it is obvious to everyone around you, you belong to Christ. That's what, what, he, what the Apostle Paul means by making holiness perfect. And then he adds the kicker in the fear of God. Now, I want to finish with this portion of the passage. Because there is so much misunderstanding when the Scripture talks about The fear of God. The fear of God isn't God's big, bad, mean, and ugly, and He's really ticked off, and boy, He's... Somebody said that they saw something online the other day that said, uh, Jesus is coming, look busy. That's not what this means, folks. That's not what this means. The fear of God isn't God is really big and angry, and He's very upset with me. I had a long discussion yesterday... With, uh, with someone about our orthodox understanding of hell. Folks, let me tell you something about the orthodox understanding of hell. The orthodox understanding of hell is much more horrendous and terrifying than anything you've ever heard any Baptist preacher say. With the fires and flames and the devil with pitchforks and all that kind of stuff, and you're going to be there and God, you're going to be poked and all this kind of stuff, and, or you're going to be stuck in a room watching somebody's vacation slides forever. Please give me that hell rather than the orthodox understanding of hell. Because the orthodox understanding of hell is this. You are forever going to be in the fire of the love of God for you so much and you will live forever knowing you rejected that love. Because you're going to live forever, folks. That's going to happen. That's a settled issue. Jesus Christ is risen from the dead. Mortality has been destroyed. Sorry, gang. You're going to live forever. Whether you want to or not. Here, I'm telling you how to want to. So the idea of of hell in the Orthodox Church is the fire of God's love 
poured out on the on the one who loves God and one who doesn't love God. The one who loves God embraces God's love. The one who doesn't love God shuns God's love, and that's for eternity. And so if you're going to be a good steward of the treasure of the faith that has been deposited to you, you're going to have to learn how to so properly respect and adore the God of heaven who made you for Himself so that you properly respect and honor and stay awake to Him every moment of your life. That's the fear of God, folks. It isn't being afraid of God because God's mad at you. Honey, if you've got a God that you can make mad, get you another God because the God you have is too small. The God of heaven is not subject to the whim and whimsy of your actions. He is not disturbed by the whim and whimsy of your actions. He is not made upset. You cannot take God's peace from Him. God's fine. He's not the one with the problem. You have to learn to steward your life. And you have to cleanse yourself of uncleanliness. You have to be proactive and practice the faith. Brothers and sisters, this morning, the way you spend your money, the way you spend your time, the way you set your priorities, the way you raise your children, the way you drive your car, the way you treat your spouse, the way you conduct yourself with others. St. Saint Augustine said it best, Live well, and the world will change. Live well, and the world will change. On this Sunday, as we continue looking at being good stewards, treasure has been given to you. An unbelievable treasure has been dropped in your lap. How are you going to use it? Your choices will tell the tale. Amen. Thank you so much for watching. I pray this was a blessing to you. If it is a blessing to you, please don't forget to like and subscribe and share these videos. It really does help us a great deal. Speaking of helping us, if you'd like to support this media outreach, go to our Patreon site at Faith Encouraged on Patreon.com. You can also visit us at our website at faithencouraged.com. Dot .org and write me at fr barnabas at faithencouraged.org I look forward to seeing you next time don't forget to like and subscribe god bless you